Huh? Those are weird caterpillars. Wow. They could be the weirdest caterpillars that I've seen in a long time. Just take a look at them. And they transform into very cool and mysterious moths. If your curiosity has been sparked, you gotta watch this video because I'm gonna show their whole life cycle. I obtained them as eggs, so let's go back in time. Later I saw something. Now guys, this is gonna be so hard to film. Hardest thing I've tried to film. They're baby caterpillars. There you go, but they're so small, like so small. This is the best I can do. Like, a, a, a better close-up than this is really not possible for me. See? Extremely hard. I won't even focus. So these tiny, white maggot little things are gonna grow into moths, yeah. When moths are babies, they are incredibly small, as you can see. Incredibly small. And that's going to be tough. It's going to be a challenge to raise something that I can barely see with my own eyes. But trust me, these caterpillars are going to be worth it if we pull it off. As usual, I start with the classic setup. If you are a fan of the Bart Coppens channel and you watched many of my videos, you'll notice that this is generally how I always read the first instar of almost every species. And we add some willow. Willow is one of their favorite food plants. Willow leaf, I'm using a sallow kind of willow. I prefer to use sallow instead of the types of willow that are like weeping willow. So I'm gonna use a paintbrush because these caterpillars are so small. If I use my finger, they would be crushed. I'm gonna use a paintbrush to place them on the leaves right here. It feels like I'm painting. Ha, but with insects. That's cool. Oh, we have to be really gentle, guys. These things are so small and fragile. But it's, it's going to be awesome, trust me. It's going to be completely worth it. The caterpillars of this species are very famous for looking like a dragon. Really? You don't believe me now. All the ones that hatched so far. Dang. Can we zoom this far? I'm amazed this camera has this much zoom, to be honest. It's pretty incredible. Look! Wow. This camera is actually a good one. Are they all looking healthy? I would like to thank everybody who ever donated to my channel. The only reason I can afford really good cameras like this is because of your donations. My YouTube channel is completely demonetized by YouTube, so I don't make money from my videos. I don't. What people donate is my only income. And in this camera, I think it's like a thousand dollar. I wouldn't be able to afford it if it wasn't for you guys. Thank you. That's it. That's it for now. Every day I'll add some of the new babies, but for now, this is going on. We're gonna forget about them for 24 hours. Check back tomorrow. Eventually add new babies. That's it. Every few days we have to check up on them. So let's check back a few days later. All right, guys, this is just the second day. No to Donta Zizak. But the second day is an important moment to check back. Oh. Interesting. Let me show you. Small as they are, they are definitely visibly feeding. We just gotta zoom in a lot. Yeah, these white maggoty like thingies. Yeah, those are the noted on Tazizak right now. Great. Great, 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 great. What I find interesting to note here is their feeding pattern. Can you see it? Oh, that's cool. So they seem to be kind of like skeletonizing the leaves. Which is the act of eating all the leaf tissue but leaving the veins intact. A lot of small caterpillars do this. I suppose it's because they simply cannot chew the tougher leaf veins. But it's cool to see differences in feeding patterns sometimes. Now, can you see the tiny, 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 tiny thingy? It's also possibly because it helps them camouflage on the piece of leaf that they're skeletonizing. I don't know. It's interesting to think about. 
I know these caterpillars, they don't look like the most spectacular caterpillars in the world right now. But hey, they're babies, they're newborns, okay? I bet you didn't look great when you were a baby. I mean, bad man, have you seen what babies look like? They're ugly. So, they're going to be pretty spectacular larvae. But uh, yeah, we gotta grow them to that point, don't we? That's the challenge, you have to grow them. Really small. You can see where they've been eating, see? These skeletonized patches. And then if we just go a little bit. Ah, here's one of his neighbors. Tiny little thing. It's hard to make good content with these small larvae. So I'm hoping they'll grow pretty fast. Yep, here we got another one. In total I think we have about 20 of them. I mean I think I ordered about... Uh, I don't know how many eggs I asked for to be honest. I think it was between around 30. I could check. I could check my records. Don't worry about it. I don't like counting on the individuals anyway, it's annoying and stressful. Just look at the larvae. Very funky, very funny. This is not a moth that gets a crazy amount of attention. Actually, there are very few moths that are very popular. I guess, um, except Luna moths, which are super popular. And Death Head Hog moths and Rosy Maple moths, yeah, those get all the attention. But it's good to film stuff like these, you know, and show their, their beauty. Anyway, they seem to be growing well, but this is just the first day. It's, it's hard to mess it up in one day. I'm sure it's gonna take a lot of time and patience. Let's hope so that it will work out perfectly. And check back in a few days. So far so good, but they are really small. And we have to keep going. So let's check up on them a few days later. Guys, in the beginning of this video, I promise you awesome caterpillars. I'm going to deliver my promise, okay? Just be a little bit patient, they're still small. I'm checking up on them and their size has grown like... They're three times bigger. Let me dismount the camera. <clears throat> Take you up. There we go. So, now the willow has dried out. A little bit, but that's fine because I'm about to f put them um, in an enclosure with fresh food. Anyway, let's see the situation here. If we zoom in here. You see one of the notodonta zizak. Come on, can we get some? Can we get some focus here? Come on, focus. Ah, there you go. I think a lot of these caterpillars are in star number two. This one is definitely shedding its skin soon, but some of them are even bigger. Let's try to search for a bigger one. Ah, here we go. So here guys, again, they don't look impressive yet, but I promise once they grow bigger, yeah, they are going to be impressive. So can we get a little more focus on this? Hello? Stop focusing on the background, silly camera. Guys, here is in fact one of the babies. Can you see it? Sorry if my camera is a bit shaky here, but uh, can you see it? It's a lot of growth. Yes, they are still small, but that's fine. They're gonna catch up real fast. <clears throat> now these caterpillars are going to be Totally crazy, and I'm gonna prove it to you. So yeah. Now guys, I prepared a brand new container for them here. And it has a new feature. It has a water bottle. Can you see it? This tiny bottle of water. It's gonna keep the willow fresh for a longer time. It's not gonna dry out. So this is their new house. I'm pretty much going to use um, this paintbrush to transfer the larvae in your new container. Now this may take a while, they're very gentle. Have to be very gentle. 
because these small babies, they are very fragile. I'm gonna place them here on their new food. Now this takes about, um, it could take over 10 minutes because you just have so many of them. There we go. Yeah, it's very delicate work. <clears throat> Breeding moths is a talent, guys. It's a practical ability, it's a skill. Even though it's a pretty economically useless one, unless you are a YouTuber like me. Yeah, but you need to, ha you need to, have, uh, you need to be able to manipulate very fragile small creatures. It's not always easy. For example, this caterpillar here, we need to not squish him. There we go. Now he's on the paintbrush. I don't know if you can see it, it's so small. Can we zoom in? Zoom on my hand and then I go up. I don't know, my camera is really not cooperating with zoom today, but can you see the baby? So I'm going to go over this leaf, yeah? There you go. See the small caterpillar on my paintbrush? And then I'm gonna place him here on the leaf. See that? Ta-da! And that's what we do. <clears throat> and now we'll go over to the next one. Now this is the most annoying part of the job. Because the caterpillars are so small and we have so many of them. I have to find them first, all of them, which there's a couple of dozen I think. And uh, they're not cooperative. They don't want to be picked up, obviously, by like a giant object. Uh, wonder if they have any idea what's going on. Probably not. So There we go. Found another one. Now, this content is going to get good, guys. You're going to be, have to be patient. I'm showing you how to raise them. Um, they are growing so fast. I'm really surprised. Like uh, a few days ago, they were incredibly small uh, we have one caterpillar here that's just refusing to go on the paintbrush I'm trying not to damage him so I could crush it very easily they're so fragile there we go got it on the paintbrush this is this is hard work guys you don't see it behind the scenes how much hard work I do but this whole channel this kind of content everything is hard work bro it is Here's a good shot of some of the larvae I transferred. Now we can have a good look at them. It's kind of cool. They've developed this kind of cute little stripe on their backs, haven't they? Ah, so cute, so small, my little babies. So adorable. Yeah. That's what it's all about right now. Right, it is done. I'm ha pleased with my uh, progress here, to be honest. It's uh, quite nice. Be careful inspection. Ah. Breeding moths feels different after I raised the black witch. I don't know if you've seen that video. To be honest, I shouldn't reference my other content in, in some of my content, because I can't assume everybody has seen all my videos. But recently I went to Brazil to uh, describe the life cycle of the black witch moth. And there was a whole operation. I had a whole laboratory and a whole flight space built for them. It's the most professional thing I've ever done. I, I felt like a real entomologist. And now I feel like a hobbyist again. But I really enjoy European notodontids. Notodontes, Isaac. It doesn't feel like a downgrade. I'm just rambling a bit. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm hoping you guys keep watching right now. Uh, I'll show you the tutorial of how to breed them. But I also want to impress people with how cool these caterpillars are going to be. Let's check back a few days later. All right, babe, we're in the routine. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, hint, hint, self-promotion. Anyway, of course, we're gonna check back a few days later to see how our awesome babies are doing. All right, boys, how is Notodonta Zizak doing? I'm not gonna give them new food today. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm just gonna have a brief look because they're growing real fast. Check this. 
Huh. That is a weird looking caterpillar, isn't it? Kinda like a small dragon. Yeah. This is why I'm rearing them. But this one isn't even fully grown, trust me, they're gonna get weirder. But now you can see their weird shape. And the reason that I like Notodonta Zizak. Fast growth, isn't it though? I'm surprised. Real fast growth. There you go guys, can you see it? Oop. There you go guys, can you see it? Can you see it? That's a weirdo, huh? That's a really odd little caterpillar. Yoink! Now that's one of the things I really wanted to show you. These strange beasts. Still really small. But slowly we're getting there, so if we look down, yeah, we see another caterpillar. There's multiple of them in this shot. Ooh. It's hard to film this and not shake my hands. I have to hold my camera steady while zooming in on a tiny thing. Big challenge. That's cool, huh? Yes, my little dragons. You guys grow, you're gonna be famous for YouTube. So make sure you grow into cool and healthy moths, yeah? That's what Daddy Bart Coppins wants right now. Come on. Do it. There you go, here's another one of them. Crazy little things, eh? And here's another one. Crazy little things, eh? Very crazy, but very cool. Yes. Awesome. All right, folks, that's all for now. I think tomorrow I'll give them fresh food. I just wanted to film the babies. Of course, I'm not rearing them outside. I have them indoors, yeah? Film them outside because it's better lighting. All right, let's move on. A few days later, Bart Coppens was still very ugly, but the caterpillars were getting more beautiful. So let's check back on how they are doing in just a little bit of time. Well, guys, oof, that stomach, that looks really bad. I'm <laughs> ruining the shot with my fatness. Anyway, I promised to move the Notodonta Zizak into a new container, but I have a problem. I don't have any small containers, I only have this stupidly big one. Because all my small containers are occupied. I am rearing so many moths in captivity, I don't have any empty containers anymore. So they're gonna go into this uh, insanely large enclosure. But then I realized, hey, they are wild animals in captivity. Is there really a limit on the size of their enclosure? If you think about it, bigger is better, isn't it? That's what she said. So here I have some new willow. I think I'm gonna prefer to keep the container on its side, actually, like this. That makes more sense. There you go. Now I'm just gonna take the old Oh, there's a lot of caterpillars in it, but you can't see it. They are small, but I already showed you a close-up yesterday, so that's fine. They still look the same. I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna take this willow and place it here inside. There you go. Eventually the caterpillars are gonna crawl around and they're going to find the fresh leaves, which will, they will prepare. I have free will. I don't know what happened, but I just became self-aware. Ah, this is who I am? A 30-year-old 30, 30 guy? Begging for money on YouTube? Breeding moths? A 30-year-old man with 30,000 subscribers? But his videos barely managed to pull a thousand views. Is this my future? That's disgusting. Oh my god, I, 
I'm gonna refund you guys. I'm gonna cancel everybody's Patreon. I'm going to refund you. Sorry for begging on the internet, guys. It's disgusting. I should get a normal job. I'm going to look... I'm going to... Sorry. I'm going to fix my life. And I'm going to look for... For job offers right now. I'm sorry. I, I can't do this anymore. Whoa. Huh? I'm back. I don't know what came over me, guys. Huh? Huh? Sorry, I, I'm not sure what happened, but we are back. We're Sorry for that. Maybe it's a new medicine that I've been taking, guys. Make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, because this channel is demonetized. <laughs> Mm. Anyway, we are going to place the babies in here. Uh, let's see. Ah, there's some more in this container. I want to make sure they put them here. Little sneak peek, but not too much, right? Because I already showed you them. It's nothing new. Yep, that's cool, huh? Very cool caterpillars. But I think it's better to wait a few days until uh, the weather conditions are better. Oh, I see I have a problem. There's a, a hole in the lid. They could escape from that. Don't worry, I will repair it later, guys. I will cover it up with something. I I'll think of something, don't worry. This is gonna be their enclosure anyway, for a while. Great! With, of course, me repairing the lid. There should not be a big hole in it or they will escape. But otherwise, I'm satisfied with this setup. Thought that was cool. Well, soon. Folks, I think it's been a solid five or six days. This is the last time we checked on the note to Donter Zizak. If you're a fan of my channel, you know how it goes, right? This is the procedure. I basically vlog the progress every few days. It's very intensive work to make these videos, but it's also very rewarding. Oh, oh, this is great. Oh, they've grown so much. Guys, you, you have to see a close up, hold on. So Notodonti Day are the king of having caterpillars with a strange shape. You can see that they really are something else, something different. Can you see it? Look at it. So yeah. These are the Notodonta Zizak, and I think this is the instar number four, actually. I think after this they're gonna shed their skin again and grow even bigger, but uh, that's about the final instar that we're about to enter soon. Sorry if this is a bit shaky, but look at that color. And look at that shape. They remind me of little dragons, don't they? Yeah. And uh, the good news is we have many of them. Let's zoom out. Uh, let's zoom in again on some all different leaves. Yeah. So if we look here. Ah, uh, see them? Yeah, there they go. Look at those. Hold on, this is so awkward to film this. Gonna need some extra zoom. Oh yeah, oops, it's too much zoom. Wow, look at that, guys. Look at how this caterpillar is just chilling. The, if I look at them, just the word dragon, dragon, it keeps popping up in my head. They really are dragons. That's so cool, though. Now, guys, this piece is, I am just breeding for entertainment, just for fun. Last year, I actually raised a lot of species for science. Some of you may remember the Black Witch Moth video. Remember when I went all the way to Brazil to the rainforest when I was sponsored by a natural reserve? I had my own laboratory and breeding space. People invested thousands of dollars in me. But it feels... It feels interesting to go back from a researcher to just a hobbyist who raises stuff for fun. Of course, on YouTube I made my way from a hobbyist. That's how I started. I was just a bored guy with a camera. I still am. 
And from there I upgraded and got more and more jobs and involved with science, so we come a long way. But these are just for entertainment purposes, because I just like seeing them, really. It's a very well-studied species, so raising, raising them is not going to reveal that much new information about their biology. It's just uh, entertainment. But entertainment is good, because I think there is a lot of educational value in raising moths in captivity. Even if it's not scientific, I try to make people enthusiastic about nature and insects. This is something I always say, but insects, they get so little attention, you know, people don't really care about them. People don't become excited about insects. People like great white, sh white sharks and panda bears and wolves and killer whales and lions and pythons well even snakes are a bad example because people don't like snakes either they're afraid of them but even stuff like tarantulas and snakes get more attention than insects if it comes to the conservation of insects there is very little very little funding very little knowledge and very little care so i'm trying to change uh, people's uh, you know people's minds about how cool insects are the cool shapes and colors and forms they can have. They are really awesome complex creatures with their own little stories, their own little life cycles, so they're all different. I hope that my channel will, will help. I do notice that some of them are shedding to the final uh, life stage soon, and you can actually tell by their face. So, the head capsule of caterpillars, their face, is solid. And their face is like a mask, you know, it's called the head capsule. And, it, and the thing is, when the caterpillar grows, its skin is able to stretch, but its face is not flexible, it cannot stretch, it's completely solid, it's, it's sclerotinized. So you can see their faces, they usually become too small for their body. And in this case, you can see a new, a new face, a new head, head capsule is forming below below the larva. Now, if you don't raise a lot of caterpillars, it may not be obvious, but the way it, this, this one's head looks, kind of protruding, means that uh, you, can, uh, you can almost see the new head capsule here forming below its old face. So it's, it's growing a new face below its old face, which may sound disturbing, but that's how it goes with insects. You gotta shed your skin and grow a completely new exoskeleton once in a while. And this one, yeah, and actually multiple of them, if we do some... Ah, see that? The people who raise moths, who are watching my channel, they will know what's up when they see this. They will recognize this. See the way its, it's face is kind of like awkwardly hanging, like this. So that means um, they are going to shed their skins pretty soon, they are preparing. So, yeah, I'll have final instars soon. And uh, the development of this species went really fast. And that's the advantage of raising small species from Europe, from the Netherlands. Uh, small moths take a shorter time to grow, so their life cycle is really fast compared to the huge silk moths that I usually raise. So, they don't have big biomass or anything. Just in a few weeks they can go from egg to cocoons, which is, is nice. It's a breath of fresh air, actually, after raising so many species that take months and months to raise. It's nice to have something that just, boom, grows really rapid once in a while. Oh, just look at it, guys. They are so weird. They are so weird. Look at the weird shape. Wow, I love it. It's such a mythical creature, guys. It's like a worm, you know? Wow. And this is a species from my own country, which makes it even cooler somehow.
it's so cool and so weird and it's going perfectly. I think we didn't have any losses yet. I think almost all of them who hatched from the eggs are still alive. Uh, we're gonna keep going using this method. So I'm gonna place them back in the box. There you go. The only downside is they eat willow and willow it dries out really fast. So I need to replace the food every two to three days. And yeah, they're still in this silly broken container. And as I showed before, I, I prevented them from escaping by covering the lid with a towel. It's primitive, but it works. This way they won't escape from the hole. I don't have money at the moment for a better container. So they'll just have to be in a crappy one, but that's fine. That's fine. It's, it works. You can see indoors, the colors just look gray and ugly, and I cannot really bring out the color of the insects very well so I have to film them out outside with sunlight and now the caterpillars have grown really 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 big I hope you are ready it's been a few days since we checked up on the notodonta zizak which are still in the broken ass container but um, I don't think they seem to my oh my god you should see the way they look it's insane hold on so first of all they've eaten all the leaves from this willow like there's no freaking leaf left nothing it's completely stripped defoliated if you're wondering why caterpillars can make good agricultural pests this is why don't worry notodonta zizak is not really a pest just a generalization but i also have a second willow and here we see many caterpillars but uh, they are small i think it warrants a cool little close-up Wow, guys, wow, these caterpillars are so weird. Every cell in my body wants to say the D word, dragon, but I'm trying to refrain from it because I've said it so many times, it's starting to feel repetitive. And some of my fans of my YouTube channel have told me my commentary is repetitive sometimes. So uh, I'm not gonna say the word dragon, dragon. Oh my god, I messed it up. Yeah, but that's really what they look like. Oh, um, it's taking a massive shit. Thank you for that. Wow, okay. That took, <laughs> that took away some of the magic. But seriously, these caterpillars are... Oh, what? Look how weird they are. They're so cool. Wow. This is such a crazy species, yo. What? That is awesome. That is awesome. Just look at them. So beautiful. Wow. Yeah, you guys are fat little packets of protein in a weird shape. Just look at them though. So crazy. Such a crazy shape and form. Yeah, these are definitely some of the craziest caterpillars that I raised this year. So why do they have this shape? Well, I can only speculate what advantages having this shape brings. But the biggest one is probably camouflage. Of course, that's just an assumption I'm making. I can't be for sure unless I research it. But their weird shape, in a strange way, makes them blend in with the vegetation. They don't have a typical caterpillar shape. Birds are very good at pattern recognition, so anything that looks the, like the way they expect a caterpillar to look like gets eaten first. But something with a crazy shape, they may not recognize it as a caterpillar. And from far away, it kind of looks like a dried up leaf, perhaps. Like if we zoom all the way out. I don't know. It's easy to see them because all of them are sitting here on the same place, very exposed. But in the wild, they are solitary, so you would just see one of them. Um, and if there's any dead leaves, which are brown and shriveled, they will actually blend in very well. I think, I suspect it's cam a camouflage thing, but I, I am not sure. We need entomologists to research it. But that's what I think. I think having bizarre shapes sometimes helps in concealing yourself. 
and it goes against what a predator would expect you to look like, right? It's unexpected. You have an unexpected shape or form. So maybe you, you don't get detected easily. A few more caterpillars who are feeding here near the neck of the bottle. Let's zoom in on one of those. Like this one. But if we zoom out, here's some caterpillars, but most of them are concentrated here in this, this area. I guess they like to feed on top. So, just one more close look because they are so awesome. This is what my content is all about, having close look at animals that otherwise you don't have the opportunity to see. Oh wow, is that not great? So cool, eh? Still their rearing setup, but it has worked very well for them. So they say if it ain't broken, don't fix it. It's working and they're almost fully grown. The caterpillars don't become super big. It's a modestly sized small European species, but I think maybe in a one and a half week, 10 to 14 days maybe, we're gonna see the first uh, cocoons or pupa. Now guys, I know my channel is not everybody's cup of tea. Some people don't like me because uh, I have a strong personality. I have a silly and sometimes weird personality and weird behavior and weird opinions. I understand I'm an alien compared to some of society. But if I had to give myself one compliment, it's that I don't have any breeding secrets. On YouTube, there's many insect breeders but or invertebrate breeders they keep rare tarantulas rare praying mantids rare stick insect or rare moths and some of them keep their techniques to themselves they keep their breeding secrets i don't do that everything i learn all my breeding techniques i give it away for free pretty much on this channel I share everything that I do with you so you can copy my methods and all the things that I do to be successful you can copy it from me one-on-one -on -one. I'm showing you everything I don't have any secrets behind the scenes I don't have secret tricks of the trade to my fans and followers I share everything I tell you where I obtain the animals how I obtain them exactly how I breed them. I show you the enclosures, I show you the food that I give them, the temperatures, everything. So, just giving myself a little compliment because who else is gonna do it? And if you follow my channel, I'm going to show you everything, everything that I do, and you can copy it for yourself, one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody can become just as successful as I am if you follow my videos. And more people should do that. 
There's too many people who discover things, you know, that make breeding easier. Maybe they, they discover new breeding techniques and they keep it for themselves so they can have a monopoly on certain species, you know. But maybe it's inappropriate that I mention it in this video because Notodonta zizak is childishly easy to breed. This is a beginner species, it's super easy. I should have said this little rant maybe in a, in a, in a video of a rare and hard to breed species because this is, this is not any breeding secrets being revealed. This is me breeding something simple that everybody can raise. But I just had to throw it out there, I hope people consider it. So I'm gonna move them back inside, they're doing really well. Uh, maybe they need some extra food because they're eating really fast. See you guys later. Hang in there, hang in there. We are approaching the end of the rearing process. A few days later, I check back. The Donta Zizak have grown really fast. And what we see is um, this, they started making cocoons here in the kitchen roll in the paper towels. And they have really strange orange cocoons, I guess. But yeah, here's one caterpillar that's spinning. So after that they're gonna pupate and after that they're gonna turn into moths. So I'm gonna see if I can find more pupa or cocoons. I was checking up on my caterpillars and I got a mini heart attack because all of them seem to have disappeared. I was like, damn, did they escape? And I was like, duh, obviously didn't escape. Some of them are just in here, basically cocooning and pupating. And we have to really take a real careful look because they hide themselves very well. See that here between the tissue paper? See, this is a cocoon, so... I'm carefully going to collect all these little cocoons here. Looks like they really like this paper to use as a, a support to build their little ha house, quote unquote, their little cocoons. This orange little thing, that's another cocoon. It looks like they don't really use much silk. They use some, some silk, I guess, but they prefer using materials that are available around them. I imagine in nature they would spin these cocoons in leaf litter. Thankfully the orange, the bright orange silk makes it easy to identify them. This is a really fast rearing. Uh, I guess it's because I'm used to rearing giant moths from tropical countries that can take like sometimes months to raise. This, uh, I think it took about maybe, I don't know. I think it was three to four weeks. Ah. Here we see one caterpillar that's literally still in the process of making a cocoon. Do you see that? He just made this small cavity and he's starting to cover it with silk now. Yes, so that's good. We are right on track. Maybe we should leave this one in here. We don't want to disturb it. Let's fit. Don't disrupt them if they're making cocoons. Transparent, I don't know if you can see it, but on the inside I can definitely see the caterpillar through it if the camera wants to freaking focus on the subject matter for once haha <laughs> poof see you can basically see the caterpillar inside it's still moving just collecting these little cocoons the caterpillars change their color a little bit before they want to make cocoons this is normal if you're a fan of my channel and you watch my other videos, you've seen this happen a few times. So this one's still crawling around looking for a place to make a cocoon. Here's another one making a cocoon. Uh, yeah, they're all over the place really. So, ah, here's another larva. This one has also not made a cocoon yet, but it looks pre-pupil. I think it's gonna spin, still cocoon somewhere. So we should definitely leave these caterpillars alone. Let's leave them in this tissue paper, bury it in there. That's where they like it. That's where they want to make cocoons in a hidden spot. Now I've been giving them food for every few days. And the real question is, do we have any caterpillars left? It looks like most of these leaves are completely untouched, but I do see one silly little thing here. What's this? What's this guys? Camera zoom, yep. So this little buddy right here, he is the, oh, fingers. 
this little buddy right here. He's the last caterpillar left. He's the last one that we have. Whoa, you're the slowest. It's official. Dude, all your brothers and sisters are making cocoons and you're still eating. But that's fine. We all do it at our own pace, don't we? Oh no, it's taking a, a poop. That's very rude. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for embarrassing yourself on YouTube like that. People are gonna unsubscribe now, you filthy animal. Just kidding. Ah, so weird. I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss this small species, this small but very crazy species. But um, I think that's the last of them. I don't see any other caterpillar right now. Yeah, that's that's all of them, isn't it? How do we call a slow, crazy little bastard? I don't know. Let's call this one Jurgen. Jurgen is a little slow. Very interesting. Wow. Very cool. Well, I'll check back in a few days to to finish the project, you know, to clean up the cage. Obviously, in a few days we're not gonna have any larvae anymore, so I can use this box for another species. That's good. That's great. Of course, I check back a few days later. You. Thank you for watching, guys. Without you, I would be a nobody. In fact, even with you, I'm still a nobody, but I'm less of a nobody with my audience. Thank you for making this nobody feel like a somebody. Anyway, today, all my caterpillars pupated, the rearing is finished. And I would like to do a checkup of how the pupae are doing. Let me go ahead and stand behind the camera for a second. Yeah, let's operate this baby. So we're gonna count some of the cocoons. Now, as you can see, we actually we have some pupae who just pupated like very loosely here in the, in the paper towel. But it's a good opportunity for us to check out what the pupae look like. In my opinion, the family of Notodontidae, which is a moth family, uh, needs to have more attention, you know, especially the European species, they are very cool. People like to dismiss them because they are small, I guess. Not very large creatures. Ah, here's another pupa. So let's count the cocoons. Cocoon number one. Let's see. Cocoon number two. This is going to be very rough because uh, cocoon number three. Sometimes multiple caterpillars spin a cocoon in one place. So it's possible that I actually have more than I'm counting. So we have three, number four, five and number six right here. Very cool. Seven, eight, nine. All right, so we have at least 10 of them, but there's more of them that are pupating behind the scenes. I uh, just wanted to see if the pupae are healthy. Let me show you, I guess, what to do next with the pupae. This is my cocoon chamber. Here I store all my pupae and cocoons. It's many of them. Now the pupa of this species have the annoying ability to hibernate. But I don't think that's gonna happen because I raised mine in spring. Whee! Very early in spring. So, and they can have two broods a year. Like, usually the first generation of insects can make a second brood later in the year. And let's hope that happens so this, this video won't take a whole year to make, you know. There is a chance they will hibernate though until next year, which is inconvenient. It's, uh, I think they have like, most species have what's called a partial second brood. But let's cross our fingers and pray that if we wait over time, the moths will come out. That would be great. Well, and now we wait.
We wait a really long time. I waited over a month until finally. Well, 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 I was checking the moth cage today and guess what we find here in the back? Ooh. Let's take it for a little closer, buddy. Don't freak out, buddy. Don't freak out. Come on. This tiny little thing? Yeah, that's what it's all about. It only lives for a few days too. So much effort for a small cutie. But you know what? If we show you a close-up, I'm pretty sure you guys can appreciate it. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Notodonta Zizak. So, since recently I have been a little more interested in European species of moths. And this is one of the cool species from my own country that I always wanted to rear. Just the caterpillars are crazy, but the moth is actually kind of pretty. Now, on this YouTube channel we are typically used to raising enormous species with giant wingspans like giant tropical silk moths and stuff like that but sometimes you need something small and humble like this no todontas isaac so that's pretty cool huh i'm I think this one is male. The females are actually, as expected, a little bit bigger, as usual, really, for most moth species. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cute. And it's always too size, nice to see moths that you yourself have raised. So, it also seems to have a pretty cute face. Look at that. Oh, it is cute. Look at its little arms. Its common name is the Pebble Prominent. Surely this is a reference to its color. Can I see the similarity to a pebble? Hmm, maybe with some imagination, I'm not sure. This color scheme is uh, spot on though. Pretty cute. Now I'm also making this video for a special reason. That's because I want people to want to encourage people to study native species, including small and obscure ones. Well, this one is not really obscure. It's a very common widespread species. But the insects don't always have to be exotic from a foreign country or big or flashy to be impressive and cool. This species has a really cool biology and life cycle. And it's just a modest little note to don't it from the Netherlands and Europe. 
and it's just great. That's just great. I love it. Anyway, here I have an enclosure. That's where it's going to survive for now. Let's put it in here. I think this is a male. So I am waiting to get a female. That means that they could mate and lay eggs. That would be really nice. All right, let's put the cage here outdoors. Why not? It's a native species. And now we check back a few days later. Is this what is this? Ooh, what is this, senpai? No, but seriously, what is this? I found something that makes my moth breeder heart beat faster. Because here in my insect, oh, look at that. Oh, looks like there's many of you. Can you guys see them? I know I can. That's one, that's two, and that's three. Hey, I'm happy guys. Oh, my mom just called me for dinner. Bye, one moment. So guys, it looks like we don't have just one, not two, but three new moths today. Here they are, can you see them? And it makes me happy. They are very pretty in my opinion. So these are the pebble prominence guys. Notodonta zizak. Very cool species. Very cool. Over the years I've learned how to appreciate markings that are brown and grey and silver instead of just colorful stuff like colorful butterflies we actually like subtle and dark colors as well you just have to learn how to appreciate it it's like an acquired acquired taste really and i can see that we have so it looks like we have um two males and one female and this one here is the female i can tell by her abdomen her abdomen is very big very thick yeah, that's the church bells in the background of my hometown. You can hear them in many of my videos. They are starting to become almost iconic. Yeah, can you see it? So these guys are definitely males. I'm trying to hold my hand still, I'm shaking a bit. And here is the female. Don't know if you can see it, but the female. Well, her colors are also a little bit different. She has a very round, rotund abdomen. So it's kind of hard to show it on camera. But I've seen so many moths in my life. For me, it's often easy to uh, instantly know which ones are male or female. Guys, okay, so what's the status? Well, it looks like this species um, really enjoys sitting on my fingers. That reminds me of a Tinder day that I had a few, a few years ago. Um, but yeah, the total moth count is now four. And I think we have, I think, I'm not so sure. Oh, the wind is uh, waking them up. I think that right now we are at, I think we have three males and one female, but I'm not sure. Haven't really checked extensively. So yeah, really cute moths, really cute species. Can you see it? They are really small. Usually the moths I have on my channel are so much bigger than this, but you know what? We have to get over it. Small species are worth it. They are worth showing off. Pairing this gorgeous little species, it should not be hard. It should be easy, in fact. Um, I think it's just a matter of putting them together in one enclosure. Usually moths of the Notodontidae family are easy to mate, in my opinion. Some of the easiest. So, when it comes to that, I think this is enough. Ooh. Very spooky Illuminati hand symbols, guys. Oop. 
gonna shake them gently off. There you go, running around, panicking. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, yeah. So we close the cage and I'm just gonna put it outdoors in my garden since it's a native species. So the temperatures here and stuff should be perfect. And here it goes. Let's place them here for tonight. This is just outdoor in my garden shed, which I need to clean up. Here's some wood that I chopped and it's my garden. We check back in a few days. And now we check back a few days later. Guys, here's our little offenders who refuse to have sex. As very crude as that sounds, that's really the root of the issue. These moths refuse to mate. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I can tell males and females apart. Do, are these males? Are these females? I don't even know. I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm starting to question myself. We'd have to be really unlucky if all of these somehow happen to be... If all of them happen to be female. But I don't see... Either maybe the mating time is very short and I don't see it in captivity when it happens. Sometimes some species of moths only mate for like 15 minutes or less. If that's the case, it may have, ha may have happened, but I don't notice it. But I don't think so. Usually note that dentists, they like to hook up all night and up until the morning. It's very noticeable. Oi. Somebody in the background overcompensating with a very noisy motorbike. Yep, probably has something to compensate for. But, can you see it? These moths are really cute. I'm really enjoying it. But to me, it's very annoying that they don't want to reproduce. They don't want to mate. And it's driving me a little bit crazy. It's really kind of annoying. Now guys, my moths don't seem to be mating and it's starting to frustrate me. I put a lot of time and effort into raising them and I don't understand why they don't want to mate. And, and to be honest, I find it very hard to tell males and females apart. And I have the sneaking suspicion that maybe all of them are female. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, we have seven moths right now, seven individuals. It would be really unlucky if all of them are female, but it's not impossible, you know? Sometimes the odds are just against you. But I am not even sure because I find it actually hard to separate males and females of this species. I tried to look it up online. It's my first time raising them, so I'm inexperienced with this species, and it's... I don't know if these are males and females. And I don't know when they are supposed to mate. I can't believe I'm struggling with freaking notodontas. These are... Oh well, if we don't get a pairing, I'm gonna upload the episode anyways. Just because we like to talk about the species, but... Uh, I'm going to be really frustra frustrated if there's no males showing up eventually. Now we have more cocoons, so there's a chance a male is going to appear. But they have to hurry up, because I'm starting to run out of cocoons soon, you know. And these, if the, if my theory is that all of these are female, it's very hard to see actually, if they are male or female. So, I, I don't even know. Uh, it's strange, you know? It's been a long time since I've been so confused. So, that's crazy, yo. What do you guys think? Ju ju judging based on their abdomen, this is a female, right? These must be females. I have a suspicion I've been just really unlucky and all my moths are female. So we don't have a male and female that can mate because of sheer bad luck. That would be really, that would make me really angry. <laughs> I'm still enjoying the experience actually. The caterpillars were amazing, the moths were amazing. 
and I've been really successful breeding several species on YouTube recently. And if an episode is not going to end with a pairing, so be it. Not everything has to be perfect. Of course, we all like a perfect ending. Also, it's frustrating because I want to have footage of males and females. If we don't have that, it's going to be annoying. Anyway. Ah, uh, we are nearing the end, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. But one more update a few days later. It was a wonderful experience, but a few weeks later, most of the moths are dead. It's no surprise, really. They don't live very long. Here's some of the dead ones, if you don't believe me. Rest in peace. Whee. They did leave a gift behind, which is eggs. Now, I had the suspicion that of all my moths, most of them were female. But, to be honest, I found it... Usually I find it easy to tell which pieces are male or which individuals are male or female. But in this species I found it quite hard for some reason. I was looking really close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect the eggs they left behind <clears throat> in a petri dish. It's possible that maybe, even though I think most of them are female, it's possible I, I misidentified some of the males as females. And if that's true, they may have mated it while I didn't notice. Sometimes moths can mate for a short time and you just don't notice, even if you are the breeder. So just to make sure, if, there's, if the eggs hatch in a few weeks, we know that actually we did manage to breed them and complete the life cycle. And if we didn't, that confirms my suspicion they're all female. So if we zoom in in the cage, we see a lot of these white dots. These are essentially eggs. Now at first glance some of the eggs appear to be dried out and old already. But some of them still appear to be pale and white. Which could actually mean they are fertile. There is a lot of them so I best get started now. By the moment of truth, here's the eggs ladies and gents. Here are the eggs. Some of them actually look fertile so who knows. Let's place the eggs in here in this petri dish. You never know, actually. Just gonna collect them using my fingers, don't worry. They are small, but the eggshell is actually quite tough, believe it or not. There you go. So I can use my fingers to scoop them up. So, did the eggs hatch? Did we get babies? Let me show you what happened about two weeks later. So here's some of the eggs, guys. There's hundreds of them. Zoom. A lot of them look infertile, especially the dried out yellow ones. But I still have hope for the white ones. They may or may not be fertile. If they are, we'll find out soon in about two weeks. This is a bit sad. This is a bit unfortunate, but the eggs two weeks later did not hatch. It seems that all the eggs that my moths have laid were completely infertile. Ay, 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 that's painful. I really wanted to breed more of them, so that makes me sad. So that marks the end of the video, guys. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed seeing this life cycle, even if it did not end with a mating and offspring. I'm a little bit bitter about that. But it was my first time with this species and in my opinion I think all of them were females I think due to extremely bad luck we managed to exclusively raise females and you need a male and a female to get a mating and we just had females I would like to have a rematch I really enjoyed raising this species the caterpillars are spectacular I love it but I want a full life cycle that ends with more, not less individuals than we started with. This is, an, this is a loss, this is a net loss, unfortunately. But I'm gonna upload it anyway because it was cool. We saw the whole life cycle and the crazy caterpillars. I hope you guys enjoy this too. I certainly enjoyed it. And you can see the whole life cycle and learn something about this cool species. So it's still a cool video. I'm still happy. 
The rear ring, we have no problems. We got many from them from egg to cocoon to moth. It's just the pairing, you know, the sex. Where it failed, unfortunately. Last but least, my channel is completely demonetized by YouTube and they don't want to tell me why. Yeah, that's right. I don't make money from YouTube ever. So if you like my show, consider becoming a member on my Patreon or donating to my channel. Of course, only if you are willing and able to. I am not entitled to everything, anything. Just have to throw that out there, guys, to remind people. Because crowdfunding is the only budget I have to make these videos all the time. Anyway, see you in the next one, guys. Uh, this is a cool life cycle of a notodontid moth. See you in the next uh, video. Bart Coppens out. Such a shame. We could have raised so many. I guess not. Believe it or not, but I work really hard on my videos. And if you want to support that work, consider becoming a member of my Patreon. You see, I am dependent on crowdfunding and donations to continue doing what I do. So if you enjoy my show, consider buying a subscription to my Patreon account for as little as one dollar. There are several tiers and people in the higher tiers receive gifts that I make myself. Yeah, these mugs that you're looking at right now with moths on them, I photographed those moths myself. I designed this stuff. And if you are a member of my Patreon, there is a loyalty program where you can earn these rewards and I send them to you. Sounds good? See you on my Patreon. Thanks for watching.